Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Clearwater Jazz Holiday Foundation's Young Lions Jazz Master Virtual Sessions. I'm your guest host, Michael Kernodal, and today's educator is none other than the great Tyler Workman, and the topic is hearing and practicing harmony. It's going to be an awesome session. Just want to remind you as you come in today, um, and we welcome you here. If you have any questions, just go into the chat feature and type your question. We'll try to reserve some time uh, for our educators to answer your questions. And don't forget, you know, you can always go to our website and check out the upcoming free sessions and uh, maybe some of the things in the archives. You can always go to www.clearwaterjazz.com slash education. And uh, don't forget, Check out the studio archives, past video sessions at the website and the education outreach section. And that is brought to you by great sponsors at Blue Water Wealth Management at Stewart Partners and Duke Energy, as well as the Young Line podcast available wherever you stream. That's brought to you by friends over there at Marine Max Clearwater. And just search Young Lines Jazz Maps Virtual Sessions wherever you stream. You know, where do we begin? You know, Tyler is definitely not a stranger to the Clearwater Jazz Holiday Outreach Program. I mean, he's done so many great things. I mean, how about some of these past sessions if you haven't checked them out? Here's one of our favorites, basic trombone fundamentals. He did the long tones, lip slurs, tonguing and articulation, major scale in arpeggio practice. But you know what? He didn't stop there. He gave us some more. He gave us an approach to improvisation on the trombone, and all of us can improve on our improvisation, so you have to check that out. And just a little bit about Tyler, if you don't know this bad man on the trombone, <laughs> he's a composer, performer, producer. Uh, he focused on jazz and classical styles. He's performed with many groups and ensembles that have taken him to travels all over. Uh, right now, he's an adjunct professor of music at the Bower School of Music at Florida Gulf Coast University. There, he's the primary director of the FGCU basketball band, and he teaches the FGCU student brass quartet, the student jazz combo two, private student instrument lessons, and he's assistant director of the FGCU big band. Where does he find the time to do all this great stuff? And he's also the instructor of music at the University of Tampa. And he's presently teaching Introduction to Jazz. He received his Bachelor's of Art from that school up there in Tallahassee, FSU, and his Master's in Music and Jazz Studies from University of South Florida. So Tyler, welcome back. And the stage is all yours. Thank you, Mike, for that wonderful introduction, as always. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, getting to work with you. Um, and so, yeah, we, we talked about a few of the other lessons that we we had in the past. Uh, and today it's going to be it's going to be a great one um, with hearing and practicing harmony. It's sort of going to hit on some of the topics that we've left off on last week, um, as well as we're going to be mentioning some things for our upcoming lessons here, uh, which are how to uh, develop uh, and understand your own practice routine, uh, as well as how to approach big band uh, music uh, in a section as a brass and or woodwind instrumentalist. Um, but all of those things, okay, uh, have to deal with, you know, playing and reading harmony on some level. And so that's where uh, we're getting into um, our first step today. So uh, I believe that harmony is a crucial point with, with musicians um, that can be uh, a hindrance to, to some. And I think the more we familiarize ourselves with harmony, uh, chords and scales, the less of the gray areas, uh, you know, uh, that there are, we can actually uh, relate a lot of the things that we learn, uh, so that we don't have to learn, uh, 72, you know, different scales or what have you, we can actually learn uh, four or five and just interchange them, uh, multiple ways. And so today we're going to start off with understanding 
major, uh, a major chord, a major scale. Okay. Um, and some of you might already know what this uh, entails, what this sounds like. Um, but for, for others, I believe it's important to really go through uh, the different points of, uh, for instance, the modes generated uh, from our major scale, right? Um, as we understand, major and minor has its own connotations, uh, but major relates to, uh, if you had to put an emotion uh, behind the sound, it, it would be a more happy chord. Okay, uh, something like uh, this sound here. Very bright, uh, very happy, uh, not too dark. Let's try another key here with the piano sound. Right, you might have heard this uh, in, in many, many tunes. Um, now minor has its associations with a, a sad sound or a darker sound if you wanted to put uh, shades or colors to chords, which I believe it, it, that's great um, in order to relate chords down the road because you're going to learn plenty of chords. Um, and it's important to understand, hey, this song, it, it has a bright sound to it. Uh, so maybe I can play some things related and associated with our major scale and chords. Uh, on the other hand, the sound or the song that you might be playing in, in band might have a very dark minor uh, sound to it, um, you know. And so for this, you might need to use um, the chords associated with your uh, Dorian minor scale, for instance. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about Dorian, actually. But first, we have to talk about what is uh, our major scale. Okay, and so... Uh, our major scale is also known as Ionian mode, okay? Now, uh, what this term deals with is um, the seven different modes found in our major scale, okay? So if we were uh, to sort of play our ascending diatonic triads found in our chord, uh, our first triad would be, let's start with C major. Uh, we have C major. D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and C major. Okay, so uh, within all of, all 12 of our major scales, we have a seven modes inside of each one. Okay, so for instance, with C major, uh, that incorporates D Dorian, okay? It also incorporates G Mixolydian, okay? Uh, now, uh, there's different sayings uh, to associate yourselves uh, with the different modes. Uh, I, I forgot uh, multiple of them, but uh, our modes are Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian, okay? Um, and it's important to really associate a sound with these, uh, these names, okay? So Mixolydian, uh, we talked about it, that's G uh, in our C major scale. Now, Mixolydian is the fifth uh, chord found in our scale. Now, it's important uh, to always know what your fifth is in improvisation, uh, because generally that is the chord that is going to set up the, the, the preceding chord after it, most of the time, not all of the time, uh, but it's important to understand when you see C major, you as a musician understand that I can play and hear almost G7 going into C major. Uh, the sound here, resolving to, okay, and again, that is as basic uh, as I can describe it here. But if you were on uh, trombone practicing, maybe that same voicing you could play. 
Or ascending. And you, you will understand that, yes, some notes do change, right, in our chord, um, but we have notes that stay the same that are found in both uh, G7 and C major, okay? And I'm talking about notes found in our seventh chord, okay? This is from our one, third, fifth, and seventh. Okay, so in C major, that is our C, E, G, and B natural, and G7, utilizing our mixolydian scale, so our seventh chord is G, B natural, D, or D natural, excuse me, uh, and F. Okay, and so with this sound, we get a dominant chord, which resolves to our tonic or uh, major chord or Ionian chord, right? There's multiple uh, verbiage that you could use. And also, it's important to go with the verbiage that uh, you understand best when practicing, okay? Just because someone else says, oh, I practice, you know, all 12 of my Ionian chords, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best way to say, oh, I practice all 12 of my major uh, chords or scales, you know, um, and if that that clicks with you because you relate to the the modes, uh, you know, in a more familiar fashion than major or minor, well, then, you know, go ahead and call it what you want. Again, um, it's going to help you learn faster, essentially. Um, but understand that uh, these notes and names have multiple um, names or, or approaches that they go by for other musicians. Okay, so um, besides the Mixolydian mode, uh, I believe the Dorian mode is the, uh, the next most important mode to truly understand uh, when dealing with harmony especially harmony associated with um, major scales and chords, uh, because this is a, a predominant chord, okay? Uh, and there's another predominant chord and in the scale, it's also the four, um, but we're talking about the two uh, because the two is used in jazz uh, in turnarounds, okay, to get back to our root or tonic or major key that our song is in. Okay, so uh, if we have a Dorian scale or a D minor chord being played, it'll sound like this to G7 to C major. Okay, so this is predominant, dominant, tonic. Right, the predominant sets up the dominant and the dominant chord sets up our one chord. Okay, so this is how uh, harmony uh, is working to get you to our one chord. And again, just uh, like my example, I'll outline each chord ascending. that was D minor and G7, I used some of the same notes again, and some notes did change, yes. Uh, but for instance, our D natural and F natural stayed the same for both chords, meaning both chords utilized D and F natural, uh, which is great because as a soloist, that can give you a lot of different material and ideas to play around with rhythmically between two notes, for, in, for instance. Um, but understand when you resolve to your one chord, uh, that F, right, is our four. Uh, that's not a, it's not a beautiful note to really uh, resolve uh, your, your line or your, 
your ideas with, right? So uh, you want to really resolve on strong chord tones, right? We talked about uh, our, you know, uh, some of the strongest chord tones you can resolve on uh, our third, our seventh, our fifth, our root, um, and as well as uh, different color tones as well. Uh, these are notes that might uh, not be found in your seventh chord, for instance, but they are upper extensions or found in the upper extensions um, of our scales, meaning they're found in notes beyond our seventh chord, our nine, our 11th, our 13th. And here we can find some great notes to uh, utilize as well. If we're playing a C major chord, a nine sounds great. So here's C major, here's nine. Play together. And I'll approach that nine from an F, which you really don't want to resolve on. So I'll, I'll play the F with C major and you, you kind of tell me if that sounds good. I'll play it again. Not the best note or most desirable sound, right? Uh, but something you can do is resolve the F, the, the uh, 11, excuse me, uh, down to the nine, and it'll sound like this. Right? Or resolve up. Or enclose the third. And that's something a lot of guys do. It's called chromatic enclosures, right? Um, and again, this is a more so of a scale pattern, uh, but this is perfect because we're talking about scales and chords right now. Um, and so again, Ionian, Dorian, Mixolydian, are definitely the most important three to truly understand before moving on. And I can't stress that enough, guys. If you don't, you know, understand your predominant and dominance to every chord and you're not able to play them, uh, for instance, we've been in C, uh, C major. So if I were to play my chord practice uh, ascending, it might sound like this. But now, try to play around with some ideas found in that chord. example, I played it a, a chromatic enclosure. And that's the same thing as that four, uh, going a half step below our three, and then going back to our three. And hopefully, uh, you were able to hear that chord movement with my soloing, um, because I was utilizing notes found in our chords that well, I was playing, right? Um, D minor, G7, C major. Those are the chords and the scale names are D Dorian, G Mixolydian, and C Ionian technically, uh, but most guys uh, and girls will call it C major, okay? Um, and again, you know, Phrygian, Aeolian, Locrian, man, they're so great. Um, but I, I just have to recommend that we, you know, really sit down on our one, two, and five, or two, five, and one, rather, uh, before moving on to uh, those other great modes. Okay, so um, Again, we have uh, Lydian, which is our fourth mode. And Lydian's great uh, because it utilizes 
Um, a lot of chords or excuse me, notes found in our major scale with one exception, the four uh, is raised up one half step. So we have a sharp four uh, in our major scale. Okay, and so notice I said we have a sharp four in Lydian, not we have an F sharp in our, you know, blah, 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 Lydian scale. Uh, now I said that, you know, with intention, because if we can think of scales and chords as numbers um, rather than letters, it will familiarize ourselves quicker with different keys, um, it, you know, and everything just going forward, uh, chord progressions, you name it. Okay, so utilizing, you know, understanding one, two, three, four, you know, can be in C major, C, D, E, F, uh, an A flat. It can also be A flat, B flat, C, D flat. Uh, but it's just easier to think of it in numbers and then associate those numbers with the letter names going forward. Okay, and if you're not thinking of your chords uh, and scales like that, yet I would highly, highly, highly recommend you doing so. Uh, because it will help you learn faster, right? And that's the name of the game here. Um, you know, no one can, can sprint before they learn how to walk, okay? And so you need to understand these chord progressions and how they work before you can truly go and play, you know, knowledgeable musical solos on top of these chords, okay? And again, so, you know, Lydian is our major scale with our sharp four. Um, and you will see this when uh, we have a sharp 11 chord located in our harmony. OK, and you might see this in some of your uh, jazz band tunes. Again, uh, the sharp 11 is found where below or above our seventh above. Right. So this means it's an upper extension uh, of our harmony. OK, so uh, one way to utilize uh, this sound is by playing a dominant seven sharp 11 chord. Uh, and so what this is, is our root third, fifth and seventh, uh, simply adding a sharp 11th on top. And it really changes the sound uh, to something else. So. Uh, I'll play our first chord and then I'll add our sharp 11. Okay, so our first chord is C7. It sounds like this. Let's play it again with our sharp 11. Right, and there's other extensions you can add nine as well, uh, giving it a nice. more open, a more, you know, bright uh, sound if you wanted to describe it as that. And again, you know, there are notes associated with Lydian scales, or most of them, should I say, you know, that are associated with your major scales. So it's really no different, uh, but just changing and utilizing the use of one note rather. Um, and again, you know, the more advanced you, you dive into uh, your material, you'll start to approach uh, different chords, different you know, uh, scales as well, um, as well as uh, you know, different modes of your minor scales. You know? with, uh, with minor, we have you know, melodic minor that's found in jazz. Uh, and I'm not going to go into melodic minor yet, uh, but just understand, these modes are completely different uh, than our modes found in our major scale, okay? Uh, and there's more of them, okay? So we have very complicated uh, you know, Lydian augmented modes, uh, which is simply a Lydian scale with a sharp five, okay? And so this is your third mode, for instance. Uh, and so there's a whole, you know, another bag of worms to open up 
and understand here as a musician. So uh, there's always material to practice uh, for me, uh, not only on the horn or on the piano or keyboard, uh, for instance. And no, you don't have to go out and have a very expensive keyboard, guys. Um, you know, one of these guys here uh, can can get the job done on, on some level, okay? Um, and for me, it's all about understanding different sounds, relating those to different chords and scales that you've practiced or might not have practiced yet uh, because we simply have not approached them yet in that light and sat down with them uh, so we can truly understand them as instrumentalists. Now, Mike, I know I, I went over a lot over there, but are there any questions? You know what? I'm glad you mentioned the piano and really, you know, digging down into knowing those scales. I would I say me, me uh, playing the piano, it, but I don't know if you do this, but we'll keep on going. Um, and so I talked about the Lydian augmented scale. Okay. Um, now, again, uh, this incorporates our sharp four with a sharp five now, okay, giving us a very different sound from major, uh, something like this. With this scale, okay, it gives you another color to add, right, to your Lydian uh, scale and approach that we've already been practicing. But understand, this is our third mode of melodic minor, okay? Um, completely different than Dorian, okay, than what we've been talking about. Um, and this is more advanced, like I was saying. So don't uh, feel overwhelmed because you might not have ever heard of uh, Lydian augmented or, you know, uh, Locrian sharp two or all, you know, some of these other scale names that are found in all of these uh, different modes of, of different scales, for instance. Um, Mr. Mike, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Hello, check one, two. Check one, two. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, I do now. I'm sorry. There was okay. <laughs> All right. Let's make it sure. I don't think you can hear me. So I was saying earlier um, about the piano, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, that was one of the tools I use. And I'm not sure if you're like this, but uh, it's a visual thing for me too with the piano. I could see the notes and the chords and how I move on the piano as I'm playing my horn. Um, I love that you mentioned that. And that was one of the best tools I've ever used with all these modes, except hearing, of course, like you said, hearing is so very important, but just me thinking about the C chord or you know, a C7, I could see it in my head as I'm playing to go with that piano. So I know all my piano players <laughs> that play other instruments, you're probably right there with me, but yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's what it's there for, because as horn players, you know, as a trumpeter, as a trombone player, uh, we can't play, you know, five notes at once. But on the piano, it's very accessible and very easy uh, to hear those notes played together, which then uh, we can see, right, because we're then playing it, uh, we're hearing that color of harmony uh, and then we can practice it ascending, descending in thirds, you know, different groupings here to, you know, work on solo material of said chord, for instance. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this has been an awesome session. And, you know, I really like the fact that we record these 
because you can always go back, pull out your horn, pull out your instrument, whatever it may be, and just practice along with what Professor Tyler has told us. You know, hit pause, play, take your notes. And not only that, maybe you have someone in your band, in your class, uh, that could really benefit from the stuff uh, that Professor Tyler has said today. You know what? I'm glad you thought about that. And because you thought about that, I want to let you know. You can go to our website, www.clearwaterjazz.com slash education, and you can check out more sessions, not just from Professor Tyler, but there's a, a wide array of educators that have left great knowledge that will help you progress as a musician. And you know what? We love to hear your feedback. So maybe, you know, you have a, a, a future topic you want to suggest, something that you want to work more on. We would love to hear from you. And where can you send that email? I'm glad you asked. Info at clearwaterjazz.com. And we would love to hear from you. Thank you, Professor Tyler. We enjoyed this session today. And uh, we're going to all go home and practice the things you've given us. And hopefully it's going to help us and our next voyage of improvisation. We hope to see you out there on the big stages. And everybody, we hope to see you on our next one. And until then, keep it swinging. We'll see you then.